Welcome back to Sailing Sea Dream McClyde. In this episode, Rachel and Ben join me on the way down to Ketchikan. We leave Petersburg behind in the mist and do a bit of sailing down Wrangell Narrows. We catch some good wind across Sumner Strait to an anchorage nearby and then have some really good fishing the next day as we drift around and wait for wind. With minimal breezes coming up through the day, we don't make it very far, but we have a wonderful time in calm weather. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're enjoying this series, make sure you hit subscribe so you see the next episodes coming up. All right, we're just leaving Petersburg. Uh, gonna fuel up a little bit. Um, we got some new crew members. We got Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hello. And Ben, you guys uh, might recognize Ben from uh, the sail to ski mission at Princess Louise a bunch of years ago, that goofy video I made. Um, but anyways, we're gonna fuel up and then I'll give an update on what the heck I was doing in uh, Petersburg, this lovely little town that I took zero footage of. But off we go. As I alluded to in the previous episode, a lot of changes were happening in my life. I had a really nice time unwinding in Petersburg, taking care of some boat chores and also meeting someone that you will definitely be seeing in some future episodes. Woo! All right. We're, do, we're doing something silly. We're, uh, we just got turned the engine off. We're sailing down the some of the skinny parts of Wrangell Narrows here. But there's not much traffic and there's a nice beam reach of all things. I thought it'd certainly be on our head. We're making a fine pace. We're going almost the same speed as our powering. So, hell yeah, this is great. Just uh, watch where we're going. <laughs> All right, we are passing marker 21. A fine place to sail. It's like a good racing course. Stay between all these markers everywhere. Oh, we're getting, maybe we're going to get a little bit of a... It's a slalom heady. course. Yes! Sail, sail, sail solemn. Here we got Ben, uh, the human whisker pole. Are you rocking the boat hook? Yeah. Keep this uh, Genoa a little happier while we're doing the silliness of, sa of sailing down a chunk of uh, Wrangell Narrows here. I think the channel is like... 400 feet wide or something. Got Rachel on the helm, rocking it. And the wind has been, initially it was pretty good. There's like a, there was a good little beam reach for a bit. Um, and now it's a little bit fluky, but mostly behind us, surprisingly. I didn't expect it to be any kind of northerly. So that's kind of fun, but we'll just uh, see what we can do. The key is ready in case one, a barge comes around the corner or two, the wind totally dies and we start drifting into the channel or out of the channel. There, we're coming past marker 13A in the Wrangle Narrows 500. There's 13 up there. This is one of the skinnier parts right here. Pretty defined channel. Got the uh, he switched sides now. The uh, human whisker pole, since I don't have a whisker pole on board right now. It's on the list. getting a little light wind here in Wrangell Narrows, but there's another little bit of wind up here. We keep saying, no, the wind's gonna die, but it keeps coming back. Got this big powerboat, fortunately met us here, and not just a little head in the really narrow channel. It's a beast, it's a total beast. There it goes. Hold on, Rachel! <laughs> Okay, we are passing marker 2A. Only number two, are we almost done? The channel widens up here in a second um, and there's a little more wind ahead. We are currently just drifting 1.2 knots. We're gonna get the oars out soon maybe. <laughs> Sculling with the with the rudder perhaps. There's, you know, there's options. We could like flap the uh, mainsail perhaps. Would that work? Anyways, this has been pretty fun. We've probably sailed like six or seven miles, I think, by now, um, down the channel here. Gaston! <laughs> oh, wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on the south end of Wrangell Narrows. The wind has come up from the southeast now, or east. And we are just close haul, getting out of the last of the channel here. And then we're just gonna shoot a lofty four miles across St. John Harbor and have a nice civilized evening of anchoring at 3.30 or four and kind of settle into the boat, take care of a few things. And I was told by the Harbor Master that this is a spot for halibut from the anchorage. So we'll see what we can find. So yeah, looks like we'll have a nice little sail across here and then the anchorage we're gonna be in is totally protected from the south. Um, so we should be pretty good in there.
Rachel and I have the right idea here. Ben's just soaking up the uh, probably only proper like Alaskan rainy day we're gonna have on their their chunk of the trip here. It looks like it's gonna turn sunny in the next couple days. Um, yeah, so we're just enjoying this. Hydrovane's doing all the work right now. He's doing a great job. Good job, Hydrovane. And we're just a mere couple miles from, uh, from St. John Harbor now, and we'll anchor up there and do a bit of fishing and hang out. Okay, we're sailing into St. John Harbor. We just dropped the main preemptively, and we're gonna anchor up, and it looks pretty nice. A bit of wind funneling in there, but it looks pretty calm just up ahead. Had a really fun rip roar and sail across um, Summer Strait, only 45 minutes or something. Okay, so we're trying the elusive sail onto anchor. As the regular viewers will know, we have sailed off the anchor on numerous occasions, but not the elusive on the anchor. What do you think, guys? It's going to happen? Things are looking good. Uh, yeah. All right. We've got fairly gentle wind. Um, the wind is staying steady right to the spot we want to anchor in. It'll be a nice amount of wind to um, firm up the anchor. And yeah, we've got the mainsail down. Anchor's ready to go. So see what happens, folks. Bit of a floppy sail situation. However, I'm seeing depths are just coming up to where we want them and we're still going to have a knot. We are just trying to squeeze out a little more wind, a little bit behind us there trying to come in. Can you pull the sheet in a little bit? And what's our depth? Perfectly trimmed. Depth is 67.5. We're aiming for uh, 69, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely 69 <laughs> or four, four, 42, 42.0. <laughs> oh, it was just 6.6. Six six. Nice. Those are pretty good no, depths, actually. Yeah, that's why you avoid that one. Yeah. Footage of the anchoring process. You guys ready up there, yeah. bow team? I'm happy to announce that we are finally sailing onto anchor. We have dropped sail. We're going like, what, half a knot? Just turning right now and sail anchors all ready to go. Let's do it. No engine necessary. That's a bad little anchorage. We are out here fishing for halibut. So far, we've almost caught 10, I think. Yeah, 10 bites We've at least. so, so close to catching one right now. What are you up to? Uh, we're just going to do a little water test. Chile! <laughs> 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 climbing action. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good box treatment. Very good. Okay, so we're just chilling at anchor. Got in at like five o'clock, had leftovers from last night. This ridiculously large portion of pad thai I was given was enough to feed me for dinner twice and these guys as well for dinner tonight. Um, but it's super kind of hot in here, it's like a sauna almost. Um, but we're just enjoying the little stove and uh, reading books and chilling out. Very cozy. Yeah. <laughs> nice and warm. Reading, looking at the maps, the old Navionics tradition dies hard. Um, we're, we're picking it up again and looking at all the options. There's so many down Clarence Strait. But yeah, it's a beautiful night here, super calm. Had a few big fish on the line, but didn't get them to the surface, so we will never know what they were. But uh, reportedly halibut uh, hang around here. Well, it's kind of a misty night out or evening. Um, this little drizzle carries on. So we don't really want to hang outside right now. Um, but it's all good. It's nice and calm in here. Good morning. We are at a very calm St. John Harbor, waiting for wind, but we've gotten bored of waiting and the current's still in our favor, so we'll go drift around with the current for a little while and hopefully the wind will come up and then we'll go see what's up, go find some whales maybe. I think these guys had a very nice uh, second night on board, first night at anchor. Mm-hmm, um, rested. Yeah, it was super, uh, super cozy in the cabin all night. We just chilled and had a bit of wine and read and journaled and we're gonna start doing poems, so maybe we'll do a little poem session 
at the end of uh, the, the trip with these guys in a week. War, 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 war. They seem to be responding. War, war. Worf, worf, worf. We are cruising uh, towards Snow Passage area. Um, and it's just super glassy as you can see, but we're still cruising along at two, two and a half knots. Like there's it's concurrent in our favor still. Um, but it's a beautiful day to be doing this. There's a bunch of gill nares up ahead that we will need to be careful to avoid. They seem to be bunched up against the shore, which is helpful. Actually, I see a bunch of further up Sumner Strait as well. Nice day for gill nares and bedding. Um, nice and calm and no chop at all. Not much debris in the water either, so that's good for us and good for them too. Here's our nice little pink salmon that we all as a team caught. We hit it right when we slowed down to about 1.6 knots, um, I think we were at, or 1.2 or something, going past tide line. Um, yeah, the old uh, random sailing fishing style. I just have a slip weight and a hoochie and that's it. Um, and it, it works, I catch salmon every few days. Yeah, that'll be a nice meal for probably, probably be three good meals out of that. But yeah, thank you salmon. So the current was increasing and the wind was not, and we were really going nowhere. So we're just motoring up to a 70 foot shoal um, by these little islands here. And it so shows that there's mud in the area. So we'll just anchor right there. It'll be a good place for halibut fishing also. Um, and we'll have our little salmon barbecue and relax for a while until the tide turns in our favor. We're anchored on a shoal, 70 something foot shoal. And we were anchored in 80 feet. Quite a bit of tide running here and we're gonna do our barbecuing now. This is a pretty nice little spot to anchor in the middle of uh, Clarence Strait. There are some islands right over here though, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we got our salmon, we're gonna have that now and then we'll do some fishing because this is a pretty sweet fishing spot if the tide's not running too hard for some heavy lures we'll dig out. So we stopped at our little anchorage here and just before we started eating, I was like, oh, I'll fish for a second. And then this guy, perfect little 10-ish pound chicken halibut, you call them. Um, grabbed the line and I wasn't sure it was a halibut one. Grabbed it in, but it'll be perfect. I'll be able to do like eight or ten servings for us solidly. So yeah, getting the fish now. Ben's got a big fish on the line. Let it run, let it run. This might be a really big fish. More than we can even get on the boat. Okay, right. I need a little break. Great, yeah. So the gaff, you will go for the mouth. Or... Oh gosh. I think I'm ready. Again. Okay. You can see it? Yeah. Is it a halibut? Oh, yeah. oh wow. Oh. oh, look at that monster. Can you just hold still? Try to hold it there. underway after a nice little chill time catching halibut almost catching a monster halibut and we caught this little funky uh, I think it's a basket star of some sort so Rachel checking out this super funky ass creature came up on the anchor chain Rachel is consigned to uh, pole duty keeping that there do you know out we're scoring two knots and the current is gonna turn in our favor soon. It's probably even near slack right now. Um, but yeah, we only have six miles to go, so you know, not the end of the world if we need to motor a little bit. Ben on the helm, rocking. Um, we're just motoring the last two mile stretch here. Well, the wind kind of came back, but we got a lot of current, so it's um, we're going really a uh, nice pace right here. Bait ball in front of us, bunch of galls, bunch of otters everywhere. Coming into Exchange Cove now. Um, nice and calm in here. Really, we could kind of anchor anywhere along, but we're just half a mile up to where it shoals off, so we're gonna do that. Well, we certainly didn't see anywhere near 15 knots, but we had a bunch of nice flat water sailing today. We had a really delicious um, halibut dinner today with that nice halibut we caught. Looks like you're gonna get the first clear sky I've got since Juno. 
um, and first clear sky of this part of the trip, of course, too. Um, it looks really nice. A little fog on the hill still. It's really pretty out though, super calm. We're all going to bed even before 10 o'clock, which is rare for this boat, it seems, but looking forward to a good rest. Our night at Exchange Cove was one of those nights that was so calm you don't even feel the boat moving at all. After a fun, action-packed day, we all rested really well, looking forward to the next day. Coming up next time on Sailing Cedar McClyde, we wake up to some fog so we hang out and do some dinghy missions, and then head off as the sun comes out and the fog burns off. The relatively calm weather continues, so we take advantage of some gaps in the wind and do some swimming in the freezing cold Alaskan water. Wind does come up eventually and we make our way down to Rats Harbor. The next day we continue our journey towards Ketchikan and anchor in a beautiful bay that is almost fully enclosed and had really warm water. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're enjoying the series, do hit subscribe so you see all the next episodes coming up. Bye for now!